and you're calling this the sensual revolution, Pamela. Yes. Why have you? Well, I, that I title? think well, the sexual revolution was a great thing. It gave us a lot of freedom. It gave us all these wonderful things, but it also gave us really bad sex. And I you think, think we why? need a sensual revolution because in the age of technology, there's so much access, and I, I feel like it's, people are becoming desensitized, mm. and um, there's there's and they need multiple visual. Um, images that get weirder and stranger, and it's a, it's a big concern. I have children, and I two teenage boys, and and you have a child, yeah, I have and a it's fourteen-year-old boy. It's worrisome, and I talk to a lot of mothers, and I know I'm part of the problem. I should probably disqualify myself from this whole situation because I was in Playboy, and I um, had a tape stolen from my home and exploited all over the world, and people saw things that they should have never seen, but. I didn't think Playboy was porno pornographic. No, and I, I think was... say people, I'm sure, will say Pamela yes, Anderson is yes. saying don't watch porn. Hang on, you know, she I'm did naked. I'm not. Have you ever been treated like a porn star in bed? It's no fun at all. Slapped, yeah. hit, called names, spit on. You know, that's sex. And have days. you experienced? I that? have, and I never want to have that happen again because I think people also put that image on me, thinking they have to be wild and crazy. And then I'm thinking, God, you know, this porn addiction. When a woman who is, you know, living, breathing, lying in bed, and your husband's in the bathroom with a computer, there's something yeah. going on that's not normal. I, I, I can't imagine yeah. any husband of yours being in the bathroom with a computer, you know, yes. married to you. Yes. Is that something and, you've and experienced? Yes, I have. And I've also, a lot of my friends have. And, and we're talking about the sensual revolution, having intimacy, and an intimate relationship is so much better sex. We're not saying, we're not prudes. We're not talking about no sex. We want better sex. And this is kind of a... Um, so what are we talking, Rabbi, of saying, well, you have to ban pornography then? No, 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 no one believes no, in censorship. censorship. On the contrary, we want a sensual revolution that will create electrifying, erotic connection between men and women, especially in marriages. Look, marriages have to accept that we now see sexual activity once a week, at least in the United States, 10 minutes at a time, which includes the time he spends begging. She's looking at you. <laughs> so, uh... She's looking no, 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 at you. No, no, no. Present, present company excluded, <laughs> yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. The norm doesn't apply to right. statistics, by so the way. So, the... It was just... Okay, and, and people say to me, 10 minutes at a time, oh, my God, these American men, is that Superman? Do they, like, all have a Viagra drip? The fact <laughs> is that the sexual revolution kind of killed off sex because it killed the three things that lead to erotic desire. Unavailability mystery and forbiddenness. Mm -hmm. Pornography is so revelatory that it actually bores you of the human body. That's why you need it in such vast quantity. You go to a porn website, you click one picture, 10,000 pictures pop up, or so my friends tell me. Um, and the point is that you now have, you've become addicted to quantity and variety. And it's actually really boring because every, every porn pornographic video just shows you three or four positions and you've got to go through all those three or four positions. You can imagine the director saying, okay, now it's time for this one and that one. And it, it, it undermines spontaneity, it undermines sexual creativity, and it undermines sexual adventurism. Okay, let no, me, no, let no, me... no, I'm going to ask something oh, here from, a, from listening to a man of God here, a religious man here saying this. But I'm from a religion where you talked about erotic desire a religious man talking about erotic desire. Now, in Catholicism, there's no such thing as erotic desire. Sex is for procreation, and it's in a loving relationship. Are you beyond your, your remit there, talking about that? Well, Catholics believe in the Ten Commandments, and what's the tenth? It's thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, which means you sure as heck ought to be lusting after your own wife. Lust I do lust holy. after my own wife. That's great. <laughs> I think lust is even more important than love, because yes. lust means desire. People want to be desired. Everyone we wants to be desired in a relationship. That's the number one one thing that we want to be desired we want it to be romantic and um and pornography and this access to other things is is diminishing that and i think if we make that person responsible for that part of our lives it's hotter sexier more wonderful if you're you know we talk about mental fidelity as well which i think is a great thing to talk about how you if you can make that person that there's you know there's people do things that they want to do to consenting adults mm. behind closed doors we're not saying stop everything, don't do this. Just kind of check in with yourself, take a time out yeah. and, and look at your behaviour and see if it's you helping you or You mentioned your, your boys there who yeah. are 18 and 19. I've got a 14-year-old son. You know, yeah. a lot of my friends have, have teenage yes. boys. And what do you tell them if you... if you Because the access to pornography is there and it mm -hmm. does concern me as a mother like you, is that what, where do you think that leads them? Because there's the curiosity there. We're never going to stop them looking no, at it. So no. what do you tell your boys about porn? What would you tell other mothers, parents, to tell their boys Well, we've had this conversation that we're porn? having now in front of my kids. My kids have been involved in the conversation. They both have girlfriends right now. And I always tell them, if you disrespect women, you disrespect your mother. So mm, that's a good thing to say, mm. and that works. They're like, whoa. And um, but my son also brought up a good point. What if they don't What if they don't respect themselves? Mm -hmm. And I said, hmm, that's interesting. 
thing it's to say. It's a great say. question. It's an it's insightful a great question. question. But it's uh, girls and guys are being affected by this because young people are looking at this thinking, this is how I have to act and behave in a sexual relationship. Yes. And this is how I have to treat a girl. So, and then there's all these things happening on campuses and, you know, sexual violence. I think it leads to a lot of, yes. it's a dark, slippery slide. But, I know that it's kind of taken a dark turn. And, and there's so it, much it's access. It's fascinating hearing what you have to say. And by the sound of you, if you had your life to live over again, you would do certain things differently. Um, yeah, well, I don't regret my Playboy days. I think I thought Playboy was... Um, it, was, it was free, it was sexy. I've always been such a romantic that I like to be in a relationship to have a sexual relationship. It was still the objectification of women. It still was the objectification it? of women. On my terms, you know, I like being sexy. Every woman likes being sexy. And you get attention for that. And I think I maybe misunderstood, uh, took that kind of attention for love. You're looking for love. And, and, and you know, you have to look at someone's whole childhood and life to see why they do certain things. For more of the same, just click here. And don't forget, you can subscribe for even more of these amazing videos exclusive to our channel. Katie has recently admitted that she's gone through 11 boob jobs in Inter one year. Oh, no, it's no, from Big not... Brother, you know yeah. this. They've mis... what's the word? Misconstrued it? Yes, I yes, yeah. I've been back to Brussels 11 times. you had problems. Sort of, yeah, no, big problems. Not, yeah.